Hey everybody, it's RJ here and welcome back to the Find Your Flow channel. Just real quick before we jump into the episode today, I just want to talk about what it's all about so that you kind of have some backstory and you know where to check out more information on it. We're talking about hedonic adaptation and hedonic calendaring, which is part of a webinar that you can get access to for free over at the Flow Academy. So if you want to learn more about where this conversation comes from and where it continues after the point that this video cuts off, you can go over and check out the full webinar to get the full details on this practice that's very important for maintaining peak performance over the long term. You know, we can't always just burn ourselves out by pushing to the absolute limit all the time. We have to respect the need for spacing things out on our journey to finding our flow. So first off, before we get into the concept of the calendaring of it, what is hedonic adaptation? And I think we all recognize hedonic adaptation if we don't know it from a neurochemical or a neuroanatomical setting. But, you know, people are constantly seeking out more. The neurotransmitter dopamine is often mistaken to be something that is related to a reward mechanism, but it's actually more about seeking progress. It's more, it, and there's a great book that I definitely recommend that you check out called The Molecule of More. And it makes perfect sense to title dopamine as the molecule of more. It's something that we pretty much can never get enough of if we don't harness and don't try to reel in as somebody that is conscious of its power in what it's going to make us desire and crave and seek out. And so we've all probably seen the effects of hedonic ad adaptation, whether it's going more and more down the rabbit hole of checking, you know, Instagram or TikTok or getting lost in a hole on YouTube for many, many hours without realizing why you're watching the next video that's totally unrelated to whatever you started watching, or even in the sense of shopping and making purchases and how they always kind of keep going up and up because we don't get the same amount of satisfaction from making purchases or anything like that if we're not kind of leveling it up each and every time. And that's because often we don't give ourselves enough of a break or a reset between these different instances in order to allow ourselves less of this adaptation. And so, you know, progress may be important to finding meaning. And I definitely think that progress and how it relates to flow is something that is inherent in the ultimate meaning in life. But we also can't get caught on a hedonic treadmill, as it's sometimes known, with this hedonic adaptation where we're just constantly spinning our wheels and seeking out more and more thrills or anything to continue to get that dopamine hit, to continue to feel good in certain ways because it's got to stay exciting. And so... That's why it's really important to understand this concept and apply it as peak performers so that we can carefully balance ourselves, be a little more present minded while also seeking out our bigger goals and doing it to the best of our abilities without, you know, getting to the end of the journey and not having appreciated the journey itself and realizing that maybe that endpoint really wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And so our world of abundance has really led to the dangers of hedonic adaptation, whether it's through social media and trying to always get more likes and followers or trying out each new platform that comes out because it's the next big thing and you've got to get on there. Whatever people tell you with, with that, you know, there's a lot of engineering that goes into making platforms these hits of dopamine for us and so it is something that's been engineered with with a lot of intent in mind behind making it addictive just like slot machines you know people go and play the slots and they're not satisfied by just getting the smaller reward 
because it's also a variable reward just like social media is where sometimes you get the the payload and sometimes you just get a little bit and that keeps us engaged keeps us intrigued and there's everything else too you know we're in a world of abundance most of us where we can constantly satisfy our cravings for junk food or these super engineered foods you know i studied food science and i understand the power that goes into some of the engineering of food and the research and development into making foods as enticing as possible through the combinations of salt sugar and fat and making that mouth feel more and more pleasant those things that just like all the you know the slogans for the different junk food like you can't just eat one or everything like that with Lay's potato chips and and ice cream and cookies and all of that is designed in an intentional way to keep us eating and craving more and more. And the same goes with like the ease of access to various drugs to get us into altered states of consciousness. And that's just why we've got to be very deliberate and intentional and cautious around hedonic adaptation if we want to perform our best long term. And we need dopamine for flow. It's the it's really the key to getting into the flow state because dopamine helps to balance out norepinephrine. We start flow in this struggle phase where we are a little bit too heightened with the anxiety levels and alertness that comes from norepinephrine we need to calm it back down a little bit. And the only way to do that is through dropping into flow with the release of dopamine. And the problem here is if we're constantly in this hedonic adaptation state where we're pushing for more and more, we're depleting our neurotransmitters and that's going to make it difficult for us to get into those ultimate flow states that bring us more meaning or help us achieve more mastery or perfect our craft the way that we want to. And that's where it really comes down to we need to respect dopamine in order to harness the power of it as much as possible. So hedonic calendaring is all about creating an intentional agenda around your flow activities or other altered states of consciousness. And particularly, we're focused mostly around flow but do keep in mind that some of these other altered states have similar characteristics to flow and also have similar chemical neurochemical release. So we do need to keep them all in balance so that we can perform our best long term and not burn out. And the first thing to note about hedonic calendaring is that flow triggers will wear down over time if we always beat down the same path to flow. And that's why, you know, most of us have our primary flow activity, but we also need to find balance with that, with other activities that maybe you're not quite to the flow state with, but you can get there. And that's what we're working on in this peak performance coaching group. But it just takes more time, you know, and respecting that journey is really a big part of the process of finding your flow. So the, the different flow triggers and, you know, we went through that in the science of flow. So you can go back and review all of the different flow triggers. But if we're always using the same ones, it starts to lose some of its ability to, especially to spike dopamine, you know, especially like if we're always seeking out novelty in our environments, the rich environments, um, those types of things will start to become a little bit harder to either achieve because we're always seeking out the thrills of a new environment in nature or in our in our hometown we've got to be able to not depend on the same flow triggers all the time and then scheduling the deep flow states that we get into in other states of ecstasis that's really what hedonic calendaring is all about and it ties in with embracing the recovery phase of flow. So 
once again briefly with the flow cycle after we're in flow comes the recovery phase where we've depleted those neurotransmitters and we need to give ourselves a break because if we're trying to jump right back into flow it's it's starting to create more of a burnout cycle because we're using up and depleting too much of the neurotransmitters that are really essential to those deep flow states and that's where we either have to keep pushing higher and higher so that you're essentially stressing your nervous system to a much higher level or pushing to greater and greater risks, which also obviously has its inherent dangers. And that's where we see the dark side of flow. 